The Tibetan memory reaches back over 3,000 years. Over this long history, Tibet has remained enriched by its close contact with its more renowned neighbors. Indians taught the Tibetans about wisdom and compassion and the insights of Shakyamuni Buddha. The Chinese pass on great artistic achievements and advances in material culture, while the Persians taught the Tibetans about the stars in the night sky and the Greek medical tradition. Over the centuries, however, the great empires that bordered the land of snows have become industrialized nations preoccupied with information technology. In the process, they have left behind much of their rich culture. Only in Tibet, on the roof of the world, has the full range of Buddhist learning been preserved. And so, it is only from these Tibetan stewards that the modern world can learn of the spiritual insights and artistic wonders that were once common. ตาบาเลยาเมตตาวะทานอสัมมนังดาชินังเกชิเรเอ่อติงเอ็งกอสังกาวะชินเวทานายาสัจจะเจงกวาเลยอะมิกเซกิรุมิชิดาเยเรเ
His Holiness the Dalai Lama inaugurated the new monastery with hundreds of students and friends in attendance. The monastery is a monument to the traditional arts of Tibetan painting and statue making. Enshrined in its temple are statues and murals that portray the learned and accomplished lamas who have preserved and propagated the Buddha's teaching in Tibet. On the rostrum are statues so tall they had to be molded from clay on site. These depict the abbot Chandarakshita, the master Padmasambhava, and the Buddhist king Chisong Dyuse, who together helped to establish Buddhism as the eternal faith on the Tibetan plateau. To the left and right, respectively, are statues of the great 14th century Dzogchen master Longchen Rabjampa and the great 5th Dalai Lama, the two luminaries whose teachings form the core of the monks' study and practice. The murals that line the assembly hall depict the founding fathers of each of the four schools of Tibetan Buddhism, Nyingma, Sakya, Kayu, and Geluk, while the murals above depict the great Indian masters who passed on the Buddha's teachings of Sutra and Mantra. Revered for their wisdom, they are remembered fondly as masters of awareness, supreme beings, and ornaments who adorned the world. Upstairs is a library containing the word of Buddha and hundreds of scriptures, while outside stands a stupa containing relics from the Buddha, the eight bodhisattvas, and many other great masters. In the portico, the four great guardian kings stand guard over the temple doors while the enlightened warrior king and hero of the world's longest epic, King Gesar of Ling, looks on along with his queens, ministers, and generals. It is Rinpoche's heartfelt hope and cherished wish that this monastery be worthy of its association with the Nyingma school and the lineages of the great 5th Dalai Lama and Longchen Rabjampa. To preserve and pass on the wisdom of these great masters, monks must receive a comprehensive spiritual education and a rigorous training in the ritual arts. For this, we have engaged four full-time teachers, two kempos who specialize in philosophy, a lope who is a master of the ritual arts, and a full-time grammar and calligraphy teacher. Under their direction, the monks have embarked on a curriculum modeled on the training Kamtri Rinpoche himself received in Tibet. This model begins with texts of a practical nature like Zapati Rinpoche's Words of My Perfect Teacher and Shantideva's Way of the Bodhisattva. Such texts help the monks not just understand but actually embody the Buddha's teachings in their thoughts, words and actions. <laughs> After having gained a firm foundation in altruism and ethics, the monks begin their study of Buddhist philosophy through the medium of debate. The curriculum starts with the perfection of Wisdom Sutras and moves on to Middle Way, Abhidharma, Pramana and Vinaya. Since rational inquiry is vital to a deep understanding of philosophy, the monks debate for an hour each day. <laughs> Then he got in the Titon Lani, Jodok Chogore, Samotangore, and he did Lachter Chogore, Lalencia de la 
This course of study culminates in the omniscient Longchen Pass seven treasuries, which give comprehensive and detailed instruction on Dzogchen, the heart essence of utter lucidity. By devoting themselves year after year to such profound and detailed instructions, the monks eventually come to personify the teachings of Lord Buddha and his noble heirs. With the Buddha's teachings in his heart and mind, a monk is finally able to pass them on to others. Uh, his Holiness, the fifth Dalai Lama, was a very, very important figure in Tibetan history. Uh, he was famous for achievement in the world of religion, arts, and politics. When he was 25 years old, Kushi Khan defeated his rivals and appointed His Holiness the Fifth Dalai Lama as the leader of Tibet. Uh, as a ruler, he was uh, very firm and at the same time very uh, open-minded. Uh, he encouraged research into Tibetan medicine, uh, sponsored arts, and had a very uh, a strong connection with all the different schools from the Tibetan um, Buddhism, especially the Nyingmapas. And while in his meditation retreat, he had a series of uh, pure vision known as uh, Sangha Gyachin, also known as the uh, pure vision sealed with secrecy. And one of the main reasons Jabja Kamtrum, which uh, founded Lindu Chime Gatsuling, was to uphold the lineage of uh, Samagyashan. <laughs> To properly maintain the tradition of the great fifth Dalai Lama's 25 pure visions, the monks receive an intensive training in the ritual arts, which includes dancing, sculpting, painting, and music. The dances that accompany tantric rituals are called cham. Late Tibetans love the pageantry of these Lama dances with their elaborate brocade costumes and paper mache masks. Their entertainment value, however, is secondary to the transformative power for they are intended to liberate those who see them. The potency of these dances is based in part on the events they depict, which range from the key moments in the life of Guru Rinpoche to the wrathful liberation of malevolent spirits. The actor's preparation is another important factor. Prior to the dance, monks spend a week meditating and reciting mantras to reinforce their identification with the divine personas they adopt. Thus, the monks perform the dances while absorbed in pure perception. <laughs> An indispensable part of all tantric rituals are tormas. Tormas are ritual cakes made from barley flour and butter. They are commonly presented as a food offering to Buddhas but may also represent the deity at the center of a tantric rite or be used to appease spirits and remove obstacles. Monks spent months learning to mold the barley floor into cakes and months more sculpting butter into the elaborate decorations that adorn them. Tibetan temple music is another essential and distinctive part of tantric ritual. The mournful wail of double reeded horns, the crash of cymbals, and the steady rhythm of bass drums that punctuate tantric rituals do not merely add color to the proceedings. They mark important events taking place in the rite itself, signaling to the participants that a Buddha or perhaps a reign of blessings is being invoked. 
Though the melodies are relatively simple, it takes a long time to master the circular breathing needed to play the yelling horn. And though the drum beat seems straightforward, one must develop a fluid sense of timing to play the rhythms that weave in and around the beat. The ritual training monks receive is put to daily use during Soka, a ceremony in honor of the protective deities, but also in bi-monthly and annual ceremonies, such as the black hat dance performed before the Tibetan New Year and the more elaborate Tenth day dance in late summer. It has often been said that the light of wisdom dispels the darkness of ignorance. In offering an education to our monks, we do so in the hopes they become beacons of knowledge that light the way for others. The education the monks of Lundup Chimigasiling receive is unique. We pursue academics with great vigor. But the wisdom cultivated here is not merely academic. It is focused on realizing our human potential to create a better world, more ethical, meaningful, and fruitful for all beings. Such an education is not an antiquated relic of a dying society. To the contrary, it is of vital importance and urgent relevance to modern people in the modern world. The 20th century dawned with the promise of material advancement and a better life for all. But soon the promise of utopia was eclipsed by armed conflict, famine and disease. From our vantage point at the start of the 21st century, we now know beyond doubt that when material progress outstrips inner growth, the whole world suffers. By contrast, when ethics and values guide our use of information and technology peace health and well-being flourish help us preserve tibet's culture of wisdom to ensure that its ethical lessons and spiritual insights remain available to our children and the generations that follow Manubalaya Bentra Sato de Noba Tintante do me bawa Sudo Kayo me bawa Subo Anurato me bawa Sawasi de me tayat